It's not easy building up a successful gaming franchise. It requires a lot of time, effort, and of course, marketing millions to get your series to a point where it's genuinely loved, loathed, or otherwise talked about the world over. Such a Herculean task is why the Age of the Living Dead IPs is in full swing across Hollywood and TV. But in gaming, tons of green lights were given to projects big and small just to keep you thinking about the franchise at large. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 insanely awful video games in famous franchises. Number 10, Mortal Kombat Special Forces. At a time when Mortal Kombat was experimenting with polygons and 3D graphics, there were some notable growing pains. Firstly, we had the Mythologies games, which tried building up narratives around famous characters Sub-Zero and Liu Kang. The latter didn't work out at all, and the original is one of the worst games of all time, but Midway did go one worse. A top-down brawler set in an endless maze of corridors starring Jax. Special Forces doesn't start off too badly, with decent combo-based fighting mechanics, but that's where the compliments end. As levels are drab, the shooting is terrible, and Jax feels plonked in because they needed the closest thing to a 90s action hero Mortal Kombat has. Also, that box art? Damn. Number 9. Super Mario Bros. Special Truly living up to its name, the Super Mario Bros. port that came out for the NEC, PC-8801, and Sharp X1 computers is really something to marvel at in fascination and disgust. Developed by Hudson Soft, who would go on to make Bomberman and the Mario Party titles, here the low horsepower of both computers meant this version of Mario couldn't handle things like a scrolling screen. Each time you hit the edge, everything would turn black for a couple of seconds while the next segment of the level loaded. Even rendering white was too much, as text, clouds, and Fire Mario's outfit became a broken yellow instead. Despite the fact that it was borderline playable, this version of Mario did have several exclusive features, such as the Mario Hammer from Donkey Kong. Number 8. Umbrella Core Capcom really didn't learn any lessons from the god-awful Operation Raccoon City, as Umbrella Corps was some Metal Gear Survive level toss you could tell was a dumpster fire from day one. The only horror you'll find is the gameplay, boring slow firefights with off-putting animations and bugs galore. One hilarious example was that crawling was somehow faster than everything else, seeing matches of players scooting across the floor in cramped positions, trying to pop headshots while just fighting the rest of the game's feel. The series' prestigious ties to the survival horror genre Genre were completely cast aside, leaving us with a bland shooter that's barely identifiable as a Resident Evil game. Number 7. Halo Spartan Assault the Halo game Time Forgot. Spartan Assault was first touted as the newest installment on its way to PC, that then arrived on Windows Phone alongside, creating the biggest deflation since Mass Effect 3 at the time. As a top-down shooter that narratively had nothing to do with Halo canon, its existence was by design optional and pointless. See, Spartan Assault is actually just a game itself that UNSC soldiers play in their downtime. Gameplay is inoffensive as you blast your way across landscapes as a super soldier, but this burns out after about an hour or two max. Worse still, it was packed with microtransactions, as many concluded that Microsoft were just using Halo to test the waters on one of the worst practices in the gaming industry. Number 6. Ultima 9 Ascension the early Ultima series played a huge part in making RPGs an actual thing in video games. These infamously cryptic, tough, but brilliantly written dungeon crawlers were among the first games to throw players into lore-rich worlds, where you could develop a character, venture around open-ish outdoor environments, and have some degree of choice to your in-game actions. This series rode high across the 80s and early 90s for genre fans before things faltered a bit with the eighth installment. Ultima then took a five-year hiatus, coming back in 1999 in full three. D, promising to end things with a ban. Sadly, like many titles crossing dimensions at the time, Ultima 9 was ugly, buggy, and barely felt complete, having gone through several iterations during development. It was a grim ending to a once-loved franchise, and it effectively killed Ultima in its most reputable form, Stone Dead. Number 5. Pac-Man – Atari 2600 Throughout Pac-Man's entire life, he's been associated with munching pills and fruit while evading ghosts. That's pretty much it. Most Pac-Man variants over the years have stuck to this formula successfully, with the likes of Pac-Man Championship Edition being absolutely effing stellar and one of the best arcade games of all time. How then did the Atari 2600 version manage to screw things up so badly, during the supposed golden age of the character? Clearly, the console just didn't have the firepower capable of handling Pac-Man's colors or even his iconic intro jingle. All we got was a brown murky maze on a blue background. Despite all this, hilariously, Pac-Man's popularity still saw this version shift 7 million units. Number 4. Command & Conquer 4 Tiberian Twilight 
Until this game, Command & Conquer was a shining example of the RTS genre, offering fast-paced, harvest, build, destroy gameplay in a formula millions grew up loving. Tiberian Twilight promised a fitting end to the story, taking gameplay in an innovative new direction that would give us plenty reason to be excited about the future. As you can guess, this bold new direction completely failed, with laughable live-action cutscenes undermining an already threadbare plot and essential features like base building completely removed. Even the standard upgrading of units was locked off until hours into the campaign. Command & Conquer sadly never really recovered, but at least this was still better than 2018's mobile microtransaction first, Rivals. Number 3. Dino Crisis 3 a franchise thoroughly dead and buried now after Capcom's Exoprimal trailer appeared to be a continuation of Dino Crisis and then was anything but. Still, Dino Crisis gave us one of the best survival horrors on PS1. Seeing Capcom swap out zombies for dinosaurs, the first two titles were a refined and unique new slant on the Resident Evil formula. Heading into a new generation, there was plenty of optimism that the series would go from strength to strength. Honestly, to this day, the idea of a new Dino Crisis done Resident Evil 2 remake style is money on the goddamn table but I digress. For the third Dino Crisis, Capcom threw all the suspense and intelligence of the previous two titles out the window, becoming a weird, terribly playing, tedious action game where you just hold down the shoot button and hope for the best. Ditching Dino Crisis 2's cliffhanger and being set in the future in space, the Jurassic Park Gone Evil setting of the previous titles was now just a bunch of bland grey spaceship corridors. No, I am down for a space T-Rex as much as the next guy, but Dino Crisis 3's evolution of semi-fixed camera angles made every last fight nigh impossible to track or remotely enjoy. A space action game with a jetpack and mutated dinosaurs could be some wondrous Dead Space meets Jurassic Park type thing, but that million dollar idea waiting to happen was certainly not Dino Crisis 3. Number 2. Spyro Enter the Dragonfly Speaking of cool-sounding reptiles, Spyro was a force of nature across the late 90s platforming scene. Unbeknownst to that mainstream following, his career did continue beyond the PS1, though first PlayStation 2 outing Enter the Dragonfly encapsulates precisely why we only talk about that original trilogy. In a classic gaming industry move, publishers Universal were so determined to rush the game out in time for Christmas 2002 that they deemed it acceptable to release with just nine areas, broken frame rates, and a villain that gets mentioned in the intro, only to never appear again. Despite looking impressive, Enter the Dragonfly feels half-baked from moment one. The worlds feel empty and dreary, and a series that once felt like a roaring fire of potential was reduced to a smoker's cough. All this began the dark descent for Spyro into full goblin territory as he headed up the Skylander series across 2010, finally being saved by Toys for Bob's Reignited trilogy in 2018, reminding all of us why those original titles were so damn special. And number one, Street Fighter the Movie. The game about the movie about the game, there's something undeniably funny about all things the Street Fighter movie game. Until you play it. Farted out by tiny studio Incredible Technologies while being licensed by Capcom, comically terrible digitized sprites of the actors replaced any semblance of charm you were expecting. At least you could play as Jean-Claude Van Damme, but this game had shocking collision detection, terrible music, and unresponsive controls, assumedly due to how not Capcom the development team was. Street Fighter the movie The Movie has become a so bad it's good fun watch over time, but at release it was universally panned, an energy that bled over to the game resulting in something most Street Fighter fans just justifiably have never played. And those are just 10 games from incredible franchises that you should absolutely avoid. Let me know your favorites down in the comments below and please subscribe to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.